happy morning after Christmas. Welcome to some devotional time for a few minutes right here at the little studio. I'm David, or what's left of him, and I'm a member of Arbor Grove United Methodist Church in Perlier, North Carolina. And I'm also a friend that wants to tell you about Jesus this morning. So hang around with us for a few minutes, and if you'd like to come over to the Arbor about 9.45 this morning, and you can't get there in person, then join us for our regular worship service on the Facebook page of Arbor Grove United Methodist Church. We'd love to have you. I hope and trust that you had a good Christmas. My family and, and I had a fine one with several of them coming over to see their mom, Miss Gladys Prevett, and uh, Miss Ann here and her sister Lynn whipped up a, a great meal and uh, we exhausted ourselves trying to eat it. Uh, of course, we exchanged gifts, but my, my favorite part was when we were just sitting and talking, mostly about the past good times that we've had. And uh, you know, it's the relationships that seem to be the most treasured of our Christmas memories. And every year we try to make new ones. I know that many folks who may be watching today may not have had a totally happy Christmas. In some homes, there are empty chairs where a loved one might have been sitting last Christmas. Uh, and I just, we got word a while ago that a dear friend of ours just lost her mom as well. So uh, it's not always a happy day uh, in a lot of ways. In some instances, there might not even be a home to be in for somebody that's without a roof or a meal for the day. And still others might be in pain from uh, an illness or an injury. And there are those who are depressed in mind or spirit for some reason. And even this most precious of holidays can be a trying time sometimes. But I'm here to tell you that that's exactly why Jesus came. That's why there is a Christmas. And that's why we can't just get up on the morning after Christmas Day and leave him in that manger as if it was the end of the story. It's not the end of our story. And it's not the end of his. When a baby's born and takes its first breath, you know the whole rest of life's ahead of it. And the journey, be it long or be it short, is just beginning. It's just starting. And there's a million different roads of life that this child can take. And a million different things that this person can mean to the rest of the world when it grows up. And that includes you from the time that you're born. But this special child, the Christ child, whose birth we just celebrated as a human race, was born for only one purpose that we know of. And that was the salvation of sinners from eternal punishment. And friends, that includes you and me. Now we read the scriptures the last month. Uh, and we've heard from the book of Genesis that the human lineage of Jesus uh, would be a blessing to all the nations of the world. And we've heard from Isaiah hundreds of years before he was born as a child that the, this promised child would be called Emmanuel, God with us. Not a God in some faraway place, far away from our existence and concerns. Not a piece of wood or a piece of stone that we had carved up to pray to uh, like a lot of the folks did back in those times. But a human being who ate and slept and got tired and bled when he was persecuted. Who cried for those that he loved and a person who was tempted in every way that we're tempted. But none of these scriptures... Talk about his birth and just stop. Oh no. The blessing of this story is that it goes on and on and on. The stories of his earthly life with its heavenly message through the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We hear those again every year. And you know again starting in this year, starting today in church. On the 26th we'll hear about him talking with the religious leaders at the temple when he was only 12 years old. Uh, before long we'll be hearing those scriptures. We'll be uh, hearing about him leaving them astonished with his insight and his knowledge of a God that he already called Father. We'll hear about his own baptism when he was about 30 years old and about his temptations in the wilderness. And we'll hear uh, people preaching and teaching about his uh, choosing of the 12 followers known as the disciples. 
and about the life lessons that he taught not only to them but also to the thousands of people along the way. And again, we're going to hear this year about uh, him standing in the door of a tomb of a dead friend, shouting for the dead to rise again. And we'll hear about Lazarus coming out of the tomb, still wrapped up in his bandages, but alive, because Jesus was calling him. And most of all, it'll be just a few weeks from now that we'll be hearing, uh, reading the story of Jesus going to his earthly death on a Roman cross for you, for your sins, for my sins, and the sins of the world, only to come out of his tomb again, alive on the third day from his burial. None of these things would have happened if we let the birth and the stable and the child in the manger be the end of the story. It's just the beginning of the story, the thing that we've just talked about. Remember what the shepherds did when they saw the baby Jesus and knew who he was? They didn't just go back to their sheep and say nothing about it. They left there praising God and telling everybody they met what the angels had said and what they had seen and what they had learned about this special child and who he was going to be. And that's what we're supposed to do. Learn about his whole life, his ministry his words, and his sacrifice for us, and tell others about it. You can only do this by reading and studying his word, praying to God for insight, going where people study and pray and sing about a risen Savior. It's December 26th. What are, where are you at in your life story? Are you doing well spiritually? Let me ask you a question. Do you know if you died tonight where you would spend eternity? Are you sure? You may be a regular church goer. You may be a member of the choir. You may even be a pastor. I don't know. But do you know Christ the Savior and not just Christ the babe in the manger? It takes the whole package for us to live eternally. You may be suffering loss today on the 26th, and I pray for you if you are. But if you're hearing this, then your heart's still beating. God is still wanting to use you. He wants you to know him deeper today than you did yesterday. And he wants you to live for him and with him. Do yourself a favor. If you've never known the joy and security of faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior. No matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing right now, then go to Him in prayer. Right now. God is drawing you if you feel that. Admit to Him your sins and repent and turn around from your sins. You won't do it perfectly, but that's why you ask Christ to come into your heart and you ask Him in faith that He is the Son of God and He will help you in your journey. If you didn't get a thing for Christmas, this is the gift you've been waiting for. And if you got a whole truckload of gifts yesterday, and I got my share of them, I'll have to admit, you still didn't get anything that will last eternally, that will comfort, that will be as satisfying as the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. It's the 26th of December. Next weekend will be a new year. Let your path be one of a never-ending story. If you're going to church, keep on going, if it's a God-fearing church. If you don't go to church, find one. There's a bunch of them. Doesn't have to be a great big one. Doesn't have to be a little bitty one. But somewhere, there's a group of people that would love to have you there. Find people that you can read scripture with, sing with, pray with and serve others with, and keep on learning the story. I've been at it for most of my 67 years, and I'm still learning. I ain't perfected the thing, but I sure like what I find. My prayer is that you will too. Let's make this year our best year yet, okay? Amen. I had a little uh, accident with a garden hose, uh, few days ago and 
got all tripped up in it, and uh, I didn't break nothing when I fell. I fell right out here in my own driveway. But anyway, I uh, I didn't break nothing, but I've got my right leg messed up a little bit. Got a bad sprain in my ankle and stuff. So I'm wheeling around a few days, getting some attention from Miss Annie in a wheelchair. And uh, they say it's going to heal up here for long, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And I've got a pretty bad head cold. I've slung myself out of voice the last three weeks, so... I'm just gonna pick you a little bit today. If I can get my, this old boy could call these things one time, if I can get my spikes on. Lord's let me do more picking than he's do singing, than he's done singing, so uh, I'll play you a little tune right here. This will ask you the question, are you washed in the blood of the lamb? Come on over to the arbor about 9.45 if you want to worship some more. I love you. Looking forward to a new year next weekend. Take care.